I'm Heather Almorjo. It's day 53 of 100 Days to Launch before Nuh-uh Foodscapes begins its crowdfunding campaign. I've been working on the pitch. So, Nuh-uh Foodscapes redesigns grass lawns into nourishing foodscapes, which saves you money on groceries or by helping you make money by becoming a spin farmer. Our B Corp rebuilds communities by hiring marginalized people and connects clients to urban farming networks. Ta-da! Not bad. So today was a busy day and I'm exhausted. I acquired this certificate, which came, oh, I don't see the name of the organization on here, but I went to a building capacity for truth and reconciliation program and I received the equivalent to seven hours of Aboriginal awareness training in compliance with Canadian accredited council standards. I'm not quite sure what that was, but Adrian Goulet and Natalie St. Denis were the people who were facilitating this group today. It was an amazing event and I was blown away by the facilities and I will put a link to that name, which I would probably pronounce wrong anyway, in the comments. As well, this evening I went to a Futurepreneur Rock Your Business Plan Three, one of three part course with Chris and Street. And we talked today a little bit about the pitch, what's holding us back, what is pushing us forward in our um, planning for business. They have a lot of tools on their website for business planning, business plan designs and things like that that are already pre-done for you. So that kind of helps. Talked a little bit about some of the catch things that catch people while they're working towards starting their company. And one of the things that really jumped out at me was the pitch, right? Knowing how to say what you're doing quick and concise in a way that's going to engage people. And that's where I've struggled and I'm, I'm still feeling like I'm working on it. I've received some good feedback. I feel like what I said today, you know, it, really puts it into perspective really is concise but I'm exhausted so I could be completely way off base with that so tell me what you think was that pitch something that you would want to hear on an elevator or would you just roll your eyes and say oh another permaculturist right like that's the kind of things I need to know if you're watching these videos you've probably seen some things that you've rolled your eyes at and I need to know like what are you rolling your eyes at what are you going oh yes that I love you know and so those are the two big events of my day. It was a really empowering day, even though I'm completely exhausted. I will bring up one thing. We were fed a wonderful stew for lunch this afternoon. And after the stew was finished and we were finished our lunch, one of the hosts said, oh, did you enjoy the rabbit stew? And a few people gasped. Oh, no, I didn't just eat a bunny, did I? And then she's like, oh, no, no, sorry, it's beef. And everyone's like, oh, thank goodness. But what I find kind of funny about this, and a lot of people won't, is rabbits are far more sustainable of a meat source than a cow could be. However, because an, a rabbit is a cute, sometimes domesticated animal, we cannot, North Americans cannot justify eating them in our Western diet, uh, even though they're more ethical in a lot of ways. There are some nations that eat uh, little guinea pigs instead of a lot of the meat that we would eat like a pig or or cow or chicken even sometimes I think they would replace it with. So yeah just a thought. I don't really have uh, an aversion to cultural meats in North America with indigenous people, but I do find myself getting stuck up on biases and I'm not sure why I went down that segue because it'll probably make some people upset. Um, so I'll just catch myself here and say thank you for sticking with us for the past the 50 point, 50% point and I hope you have a great night.